Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested and new year and new year. I feel like 2023, we're gonna see a lot of a resurgence, I wanna say, of VR devices. We saw a lot announced at CES recently, as well as an influx of augmented reality, mixed reality hardware, which may be confusing for people dipping in this space. It's a very, the metaverse is very popular as a concept right now. And if you go shopping, if you go watch YouTube videos, you may see devices like the Enreal Air being advertised as a lightweight form factor AR device that you can get relatively affordable compared to the MetaQuest Pro. This is $380. And I'll be honest, None of these devices, I think, are general computing devices yet. None of them are gonna replace your laptop or your phone as your primary device. None of them are gonna replace even your TV watching experience. These devices really are kind of complementary hardware uh, for your existing day-to-day -day device, your laptop, your game console, your Steam Deck. Uh, and something like the Unreal Light I think of this more as like the a secondary monitor. You know, the money you'd be using to buy a, a secondary display, a projector, uh, that's really the market they're going for. Um, and they're using some technologies that they developed previously with their Enreal Air headset um, while refining the form factor, taking things that they don't think people will need, uh, and then also building on a software platform that they also launch. So let's dive in into a review of the Enreal light they sent this over to me to check out i was really interested because i saw a bunch of people i trust say this is maybe the their favorite accessory to go with a steam deck and while it does work really well with the steam deck there are some caveats uh, first of all let's talk about how the display technology works uh, while this looks like a pair of sunglasses uh, what Enreal has achieved both with the air and the light is a form factor that kind of hides their implementation of birdbath optics really well. So the way you see imagery both in the light and the air is that there are two 1080p small OLED panels. They're made by Sony, I believe. They're at the top here. So while the profile of the glasses are very small, you can see the thickness actually is at the top. You have these two rectangular displays. Now the displays then emit an image that look downward and when the, the image goes down, it actually hits a uh, what's called a beam splitter, something uh, a, a panel uh, that's at a 45 degree angle, and the image drops down and then gets uh, reflected forward. Now, when the image goes forward, though, that's not where your eyes are. Your eyes are in the other direction. What it then it hits is another piece of optical uh, glass, which is a combiner, which is kind of a, a curved one-way mirror, uh, mirrored on the inside. And so the image then could bounce back so it won't look mirrored to your eyes. And what you see is what looks like a projected or floating in space large image. So while this is a very small OLED panel, what you see is something that looks like a 12 foot rectangle, an image in front of you. And the reason it's combiner is that the one way mirror also lets light in from the outside world. And so the image that you see gets combined with the light around you. And so that way they can call it some type of augmented or mixed reality. In actuality, the way that birdbath optics have worked, you lose um, light transmissibility from the outside world, not only from the tinting of the lenses here, but also uh, just how much light you lose through that combiner, that one-way mirror. And so in reality, I'm not able while wearing these glasses to interact have conversations with people. You know, they look much darker than wearing even a standard pair of sunglasses. But unlike a VR device, I don't feel completely enclosed. Uh, just the fact that I can have light bleed coming in from the side, it's a comfortable solution for me to see an image while also feeling a little bit present in the space that I'm in, you know, being able to glance at people and, and take off the glasses and have then a conversation with them. There are limits though to this type of display. One, uh, it's not full field of view. And so the way that they've designed the optics here, what you get is about a 46 degree field of view. That's less than you know the 100 plus degree field of view that you get on VR devices today. Uh, and so the rectangle kind of floats in front of you. It doesn't fill your whole field of view, both top 
or bottom, it is letterbox, the, but then the resolution is pretty high. So even though there are 1080p OLED panels for each eye, because it's a 46 degree optical field of view, the pixels per degree, the pixel density of that image ends up being about 49 pixels per degree, which is more than twice as dense as what you'd find in the, the, um, the Quest 2 or the MetaQuest Pro right now, which means text is very legible, the images are sharp because they're OLED panels here, the color is very vibrant, uh, and you can even adjust the brightness with some controls. Ergonomics is really what Unreal is going for here. So this is very lightweight, it's 80 grams. Wearing this, there's no battery on the inside, it's not a lot of, pro there's no processing really other than um, what's rendering the display on here. Uh, the, the display input on here. And there are speakers uh, on the arm, so they're open air speakers, they sound just fine, uh, but getting this fitted to your face is very important, so they've included some nose guard adjustment pieces, so you can plug those in, depending on the height of your nose. Uh, you can buy prescription inserts if you wear uh, prescription glasses, and which you will need if you're nearsighted, and so they call this uh, a 130 inch simulated image at about four meters, which is just another way to say, if you looked at a 130 inch TV or projection screen, that's like the field of view that you get. You don't get, can't see any image around the top or bottom of that, uh, and it is focused about four meters away basically focused to infinity. It's not like VR devices where they're focused maybe five or six feet of the image in front of you. It's not gonna solve your vergence accommodation conflict. You're not gonna be able to shift focus uh, on the image itself, on the, any, any type of stereo image. Uh, what that means is that you do want prescription inserts if you're near, uh, nearsighted, and you can buy those for about 100 bucks from a site like Lensology, which I'll link in the, the uh, description and comments. Uh, they also have these light blockers if you want a kind of VR simulated experience. Uh, so you can plug this in. Never found these really useful. I like the comfort of being able to see at least a little bit of the outside world while I'm wearing these. Uh, and then, how this gets an image is through a USB-C cable. So it comes with this just over meter long USB-C cable, kind of ergonomically plugs in to the arms of the glasses. Uh, and then this braided cable plugs into any device that has DisplayPort out. That's not gonna be every phone, it's not gonna be every laptop that has a USB-C port. USB-C is a complicated standard, a confusing standard where only some USB-C ports have also DisplayPort Alt as an out. Thankfully, most modern Android phones do, whether from LG, Samsung, Sony, uh, OnePlus or Oppo, uh, the ones that run on the Snapdragon 845 or newer processors, like this Oppo phone here, you plug in and uh, it, it then does display mirroring and then transmit it out. So functionally, there are actually two types of experience that you can get with the Unreal Light. You can get, at the bare minimum, a display mirrored experience. So if you have a laptop with a DisplayPort USB, you plug that in, it's a Windows laptop, you know, press Windows P, and you can get the exact image on your laptop on the display here. Or you can extend the display, uh, and it fills up that feel the view of uh, being like a 130 inch um, image at about four meters away. Uh, you can plug into uh, an Android phone. Again, then you get like uh, most of the time uh, a portrait, like a crop portrait mode. If you're watching a landscape video, yes, it will full up the full video. So one of the use cases is if you're you know, traveling, you're on a plane, you're on a train, you want some privacy, you want an image that's looking to look much bigger than on your phone, you plug in these glasses, you lean back, and you get to watch a movie. It's a pretty good movie experience. Now to get this working on a device that doesn't have DisplayPort out. Um, most many devices have HDMI out. You know, the iPhones are lightning out. You have to buy an adapter. And Unreal made this adapter that turns an HDMI source into a DisplayPort source. And so by default, you have this HDMI adapter you plug in, you plug in here, you see three dots of light. That's because 
HDMI doesn't provide power, right? It's just an image. And so if you're gonna be running an HDMI source, you need a way to actually power the lenses and or power the displays and power the speakers. And so this is actually a battery pack as well that you have to charge. It gives you about two to three hours of playback time, um, which gets diminished if you're playing at full brightness. It's a little bit of a clunky solution. There are a lot of different clunky ways to make use of this. Just the way we're just getting started. Uh, if you wanna use your iPhone, you buy Apple's $50 digital AV adapter, which turns lightning into HDMI. You plug that in, that gets plugged into your iPhone and once again becomes a mirrored display device. And so you see your iOS home screen uh, here. If you're watching a YouTube video, if you're watching a video you shot, it's landscape, it will again uh, start doing display mirroring uh, and play here. You do have to have the phone still turned on, of course, the whole time. So you're gonna be consuming power on the phone's screen you're gonna be consuming power on the adapter battery pack. Um, and so battery life does become a little bit of an issue. And notice these devices, they only have the one port. And so you're, you're eating up the battery life on these as you're running this as a secondary display. Also, this comes a case when you use this as the Steam Deck. So yes, I was sold on this and wanting to test this out because people are saying this was a great accessory to use for your Steam Deck. And the Steam Deck only has this one USB out, it is a display port out as well. Turn on the Steam Deck, plug this in, and the experience, well, the image quality is, I think, fantastic. You notice also the Steam Deck automatically recognizes the Unreal Light as a display and will turn off its own display, so you're not consuming twice display power. And while this is seven inches, it's only uh, 800p, right? It's 1280 by 800 resolution, and so the 1080p per eye resolution here, as well as it being a simulated larger panel, being more vibrant, being more OLED, does make games look fantastic while wearing the Unreal Light for playing the Steam Deck. And it's a seamless solution. Plug it into the Steam Deck. You, I'm still holding the controller, playing on the controller while wearing the glasses. If I'm sitting on a couch, leaning in bed, I can hold my handheld console, not have to you know, hold it above my head, drop it on my face, wear these light 80 gram glasses and get a really nice Steam Deck uh, experience. The problem though is it does consume, one, consumes more power. So uh, if you're running a game, you can see the power levels. You know, running a game, if I'm consuming 16, 17 watts of power, plug these glasses in, jumps up to 20 watts. So you're gonna have more limited battery life when you're using the Unreal Light. Uh, Steam Deck also has a little bit of a bug where uh, when the power, the battery is depleted to a certain amount, under 50% or so, it's a little bit inconsistent, it will refuse to um, run a display port out. It doesn't want to power a secondary display, and so you're not able to power that as well. There are workarounds. Um, there is a uh, Red Magic, I think, is the name of accessory you can also buy for, again, 50 bucks. That is a USB splitter so that you plug the Enreal Light into the splitter, that plugs into the Steam Deck, and then on the splitter itself, there's another USB-C port where you can then plug in power. It's a very clunky solution. I know Enreal power users, Enreal Light fans are really excited about it. Not really for me. I like the idea of you know playing half an hour, one hour of gaming with this and just then unplugging it and charging it. Uh, with the battery pack or into the wall. Uh, but the biggest limiting factor though is when you plug this into a game console, you plug it and you're in that screen mirroring mode, the image is fixed. It's locked to the headset. And when I was, out, when I was reading all the, the features list and the speeds and feeds when they first announced Unreal Light, uh, they claimed three degrees of freedom. And there is a gyro in here, but the gyro does not work in screen mirroring mode, uh, which means if you're watching a, a video, fix the, the image is gonna be fixed to wherever your head is moving, your head is looking, which may be fine for a YouTube video. But when I'm playing a game, as great as the game, as big of a screen as the game might look, when I'm playing a game on a TV, I'm not just moving my pupils, my eyes, to look at different elements of like the HUD or whatever's appearing on the screen. I'm actually moving my head. That's instinctively how I interact with the image. When you're wearing the glasses, if you move your head, the whole image moves. And so it becomes kind of uncomfortable. And I've often, you know, I, I try training my brain to not move my head while playing a game and just to move my, dart my eyes around. 
it works, but even the slightest micro movements and especially rolling my head a little bit starts just moving the image and I didn't like that. So ended up not preferring using the Unreal Light, even as great as the image quality looks uh, for gaming with the Steam Deck. Now the gyro does come into play in the Nebula app in what Enreal calls the AR space. It's not really augmented reality, bear with me. They're just calling it AR space. And this is an app that's enabled on the Google Play Store with compatible phones with the latest MacBooks using the M processors. And if you plug that in and you run the Nebula app, what launches is its own custom HUD where additional processing is used to compute and take into account the gyro movements. It's not six degrees of freedom, so I'm not getting like walking around and interacting with things. It's for seated or lean back experiences. But here, what you get is a kind of virtual uh, desktop where you have icons, you, have, you can have browser windows, you can actually do a reasonable amount of multitasking um, with the apps that they previously developed for the Unreal Light. Uh, and here, the image are fixed in rotational space. So you see panels and icons around where I can launch a web browser, I can launch YouTube, I can launch one of their games, I can go through a photo album, uh, and the image are fixed in place so I can actually turn and look at them. The narrow field of view does diminish that experience quite a bit because everything is letterbox top and bottom. Uh, but in practice, I could do real multitasking. I could have a web browser here and browse through uh, websites, browse through you know, Amazon, YouTube, uh, whatever I want to launch on the phone and have a reasonable number of things running simultaneously. Uh, I would just have to remember what I had placed in that space um, because the field of view is so narrow. Same goes when you plug this into your MacBook. It has a virtual desktop mode where you can simulate three different virtual desktops, which is neat, but the narrow field of view means you never get to see all three of those images at once. You have to kind of always be panning back and forth. And so in practice, still a little bit limiting. Ends up being a bit of a frustration for me because the thing I really want with these glasses is for screen mirroring mode, the thing that works plug and play with the Steam Deck to also be compatible with the gyro. I want that game image to be fixed in rotational space so I can comfortably kind of bob my head and look and peer around and gaze around. That's the ideal scenario. There's some optimism in the Unreal Reddit community that Unreal might be doing updates or maybe release another adapter. I think hardware might be necessary for them to kind of be an intermediary between uh, DisplayPort uh, output and also factoring in the gyro, uh, which makes sense because there's no process, additional processing right now in this device. So it ends up being a little bit of a disappointment and it really be, ends up being a case study for these companies that put out hardware on something on a platform that they've invested money in, this display engine, this, this birdbath optics system that they put money in in this first generation device and now they're selling this on the appeal of form factor uh, for something that, so for people who look at, you know, if they're browsing online and they see, oh, a clunky VR headset or something that looks lightweight, this looks on paper more appealing, but it really is, like I said, a more specific niche experience. Think of this as a fixed secondary monitor and it hasn't really reached its full potential yet with that gyro stabilization, maybe in the next version. They are available now, um, $380. I think that's probably more than I want to pay for even a secondary monitor. If it had that gyro, you know, I think if it bundled, was bundled with the HDMI adapter, that could make it more appealing. The prescription inserts end up costing, you could be, you know, all in over well over 600 bucks for a still, a kind of a clunky experience with all the adapters and all the things you have to end up plugging in. It's gonna be a year of many of these devices on the marketplace. So hopefully you found this interesting and informative as you're uh, being potentially bombarded with uh, reviews and ads for AR devices, metaverse devices in 2023. If there are devices you want me to check out, technologies that you'd like me uh, to uh, explain, let me know in the comments below. But thank you so much for watching. I am Norm and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.